Hey there, Brian and Kevin from Storage Review, and we've gone on site. We're in, well, these guys should be working. We're in yes, this we're, engineering we've lab. We've broken to Solidime. Yes, we've uh, gone in the side door of Solidime's lab here in Rancho Cordova, California, and we figured it was the best way to get our hands on these. Now, this is something that launched a while ago, but you've been just dying to get your hands yes, on this. Yes, it is the uh, 122 terabyte uh, P5336 QLC SSD. More importantly, it's the one with the real label on it, so we know it's uh, it should be real. You know, those marketing guys have a way of slapping uh, faux labels on these things. So we wanted to see what we could do with this 122, and we got them last night after dinner. You got one of these, and you brought some kit with you. Yeah, we tried a few approaches. One was whimsical, yeah. one was more serious. So we, we came out here with a couple mobile ideas to attach this giant drive to. Again, not exactly the way you would draw it up on paper. You'd put yeah. these in a server, of course, but we only got one or two to play with, so we had to limit our options in yes. terms of what we we're trying to do. So we brought some kit with us, but only kit that you could fit in your backpack to make it more portable and easy to, uh, to play with these things. Yes, so I came with a uh, Lenovo Legion Go, a portable Windows-based game console, right. which I had pre-tested already with a 61 terabyte drive. And so we've done this before. We took the 61 terabyte drive that they launched, I was this two years ago, and put it in a Steam Deck. And so our thinking was take a 122 and jam it in the yeah, gaming. Yeah, do some more client-based workloads on a Windows-based platform, small, <laughs> easy. Because everyone knows those portable gaming systems are so limited by storage, they only have one little baby drive Yes, in I them. mean, like, I'd be limited to eight terabytes. I want to go beyond that. Yeah, wait, you've got how many games? Like six games. Uh, Solitaire, is that kind of one? Or? Yeah, but it's pretty lightweight. Yeah, true. All right, so we tried that, and after a couple mimosas last night, you got to work and put it in the gaming console, and what happened? Uh, it installed and then realized it didn't have a boot device. I believe going over 100 terabytes broke that particular platform. As a boot drive? Yes. So that didn't work. But we planned ahead and brought two mobile platforms, so we also have this guy, right? The Jetson Orin. Jetson Orin Nano. Super. Super, and that also is a really powerful device, 249 bucks, an amazing development platform. Actually, we've seen some of the other Jetsons in before and they're fantastic little kits. Yes, it's, they're designed uh, to either act as development platforms or industrial use cases. So it's not like a NUC where it might only be used for like really small use cases. This is a area where you might use it to uh, train on developing on a new platform and then go and deploy it. Well, yeah, and so this guy is little, but it's got 67 tops. It can do more than a low-end laptop, right? Or yeah, even a powerful it, laptop. Well, and when you're looking at it, like, it looks kind of big right here, but the guy is just that little car. It looks like the uh, dim. Right, and so the magic, though, from a storage standpoint is, yes, you mentioned the SSC on top, but when you flip it over, there's actually three M.2 bays. One's used for a wireless card. Yes. One's a little 2230. Yeah, and that one, is, so both... All the slots on the bottom are uh, Gen 3. The 2230 that we're using uh, for a boot drive right now, it's uh, two lanes of Gen 3. Okay. And then there is a additional slot, so... Another Gen 3 by 4. Yes. And so, of course, as storage guys, we said, well, what can we put in there? And the max you can really do in an M.2 right now is eight terabytes, right? In a client uh, yeah, drive? Yeah, I think that's basically what we were gonna top out. But it, it's Gen 3, and so I started thinking, well, man, it, gosh, it would be neat if they had faster Gen interfaces on it, but you're, brought up a very good point that part of the goal of this device is also to be very low power. Yes, and our focus on it was what can we do a little bit different? What can we do different and how can we get more storage next to that little tiny AI uh, powerhouse that's, that's on that board? And so we did a thing and this workbench where we stand now is actually the perfect representation of the semi-monstrosity that we have built here. Um, I know you tried running it off a battery at one point in time, the whole kit, but... I had a perfect elegant solution of a USB-C to 12 volt adapter, right. and I completely forgot about the, what, 50 milliamp load of 3.3 uh, volt that the drives require, so... so I yeah, so your tiny elegant portable solution went turn to... Turn into a spare 750 watt power supply from a computer uh, that was underneath my desk for about 12 years. It feels but, excessive for the power requirement. Yes. <laughs> okay. But it does 5, 12 volt, and 3.3 perfectly. Quiet. Okay, so that's how we solve power to the drive. But speaking of excessive, 122 terabytes on this little thing in an M.2 slot, different set of challenges. How'd you get the M.2 
to the NVMe connector. So we are using a uh, M.2 uh, to U.2 uh, adapter, which this provides- This looks terrible, by the way. Well, it gives the data path, <laughs> and it still operates at the speed it'll negotiate to, and then has a little breakout on the back to uh, supply with power, but it allows you to attach non-conforming devices to an M.2 slot. Non-conforming devices, that's your code word for an enterprise NVMe drive, which by the way, we said this thing's 250 bucks. I have no idea what these cost. They're not in Newegg or anything yet. A little, bit, a little bit beyond that. A hair more? Well, I can tell you if a 61 terabyte is six or seven K or five K or something, this is gonna be more than double that. Yes, the sticker on the drive probably costs more than this. Yes, so we've attached a Enterprise drive that's easily 10, 12, 15K to a $250 um, training AI device. This makes perfect sense so far. You've taken an M.2 breakout board that I saw the other one that I believe you cut with toenail clippers to make it fit. Uh, well, that one was designed to fit perfectly inside the Legion Go. Okay, so these are engineering marvels that you yes. guys are witnessing today to take one enterprise drive. I guess this is really Solidime's fault. They should have given us more of these and we would have used a proper server. Yes, I would have pre-tested this and brought something a little bit bigger with this. So, a bigger server? Maybe, but I still big, like that. Big, bigger than this? Well, I mean, when I'm looking at what I might be running on the plane on the way home, why, like, am I going to break out a half, like, half rack uh, no. micro server or something? I mean, this is a little bit more realistic. That's what, very sensible. So when you're running your AI model on your Orin Nano Super on the airplane, you're going to get this power supply out on the airplane? You're gonna get some looks. <sighs> yes, I, so on Delta, they do have uh, two 120 volt uh, outlets, and I'm hoping I'm sitting next to someone that is not as concerned about this All right. breakout of hardware. We'll see, we'll see if that happens or yes. not. But you could do it anywhere, which is one of the great allures of the Nano platform, is these things are so tiny, you could do the work. And we've edge seen locations, yes. Edge like, locations, but in robots, in self-driving cars, in any of these things, that was a big topic at CES, right? Yeah, it's doing AI in areas that aren't the data center. Okay, so speaking of doing AIs that aren't the data center on our test bench here with tools that should probably not be assembled together, we did do a thing, and it worked. Yes. Okay, we ended up installing a DeepSeq R1 70 billion parameter model, and it functions. Well, I'm it, actually... But, but not just functions. So I think there's an important functions. There's an important, important, and what important, important. There's an important delineation here that model size may not really confer naturally. The record, I think, so far is the 1.5 billion param model on this device. We've got a 70 billion. So that's interesting because most people are using the model that fits in the uh, graphics RAM on this. SOC. Yeah, and to give you an idea of the size of this guy, we'll show this on B-roll. This is using around 24 gig uh, on the uh, on that Solidime drive. So, wait, wait, 24 gig? Well, we have models that are bigger that we can put on. <laughs> okay, so we have a little bit of spare room. Oh, and think of all the data when we run our analysis. We'll be able to save those text files. Wait, but I mean, if you look at uh, Llama, 405 billion parameter uh, models. You download, what, 2.2 terabytes at the start, you distill down around 800 gig. It's, the footprint's quite significant. Right, and I guess you can make the argument, too, that when these devices go out in the wild, especially at the edge, where one internet is often terrible. Yes, if you're trying to download an updated uh, model, I mean, the amount of money involved in downloading a terabyte or two terabytes over 5G, that's probably gonna get you. Now you could look at Starlink, but then you're starting to add on to the power requirements and everything but else. But that's gonna be on a per location basis. And if we learned anything from our guys researching hedgehogs over in the UK, they had devices, and we've seen that with um, uh, Ducks Unlimited up in Canada too, that are tracking the, the waterways and some of the beaver dams. They have cameras there and they've got sensors and they're collecting an amazing amount of data. Yeah. You may, this may not be the way you draw it up on paper, but this does enable all sorts of use cases in remote areas that might not be seen by a human for some time. Oh yeah, and this might not be the 122. You could be using a 15 terabyte, a 30 terabyte, Lots 60 of 60 terabyte, but you have situations where you might want to install the storage once, let it fill up, and then just keep it out there. You, you don't want to deal with you don't want to always have to move data off. You might just have a situation that the data is movements once. problematic. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we've got the model, it's running on the SSD, and it's actually, as the Orin is asking for information, it's feeding that to the uh, 
uh, to DeepSeek, and we're running an LLM now. So what, what What's is it that we're- funny is like, you, you think about the, um, it's a very low power device, not really working as fast as a computer with a much larger GPU to go uh, running, but you're getting uh, transfer speeds. This guy's reading up to like a gig a second or so as it's going through different layers of the model. Well, the nice thing is, is that this thing will never slow down. No. It'll, it'll deliver that for ever, right? Yeah. In, in this well, yeah, framework. QLC device is generally only limited on sustained write performance, and even then, I mean, its write performance is not going to be held up by this little man. <laughs> it's going to, there'll be other challenges yes. in, in our, in our uh, reference architecture, if yes. you will, for edge AI processing. Uh, but seriously, most people aren't going to do this, but you can start to draw the line between where storage can play as you scale up in the, the, uh, the ecosystem. There's other, obviously, bigger, more powerful Jetson devices. The Digits is going to have a similar challenge with uh, NVMe storage. You could, you could make an argument there that you might want something more powerful. But as we get it's into the racks. 3D printable, you got to enclose your system underneath. Yeah, just attach it. Yeah. Oh, like a little turtle, little turtle top on top of Digits. Exactly. But as you scale up into the data center and into these larger um, architectures, GB, uh, super chips, you're going to need storage. Yes, storage is the main limiting factor of a lot of AS solutions. You have to have data to work with. Yeah, and, and if we know anything about data, it's always exploding. I think we've heard that with uh, Solid on a time or two today, yeah. as we talk about where this is all going and, and where the data footprint's going to go and how the different stages of AI development rely on different capacities of storage, different speeds of storage, all depending on where you are in the pipeline. Well, yeah, some might be refocused, or and some are, some might be refocused, others might be write intensive, but you have a good mix and they all rely on storage. Yeah, well, it's actually interesting too, because as we look at like the NVL systems, E1S, Gen 5, high speed, not a ton of capacity in those deployments, something like this, QLC, Huge capacity, rack efficiency, power. this thing has more capacity than NVL72 setup? This one drive probably has more useful capacity than the entire rack of NVL72. See, buy this instead of NVL72. <laughs> That's exactly the, the message we should leave everyone with. Uh, but it works. We've got DeepSeek running, the most popular uh, model around at the moment. Uh, we've got 122 terabytes on a $249 Orin Super Nano Nano Super, uh, and we've proven that the 122 is not only real but works in our little modest unit of one. Yeah. Uh, but still, really exciting and showing this working. Oh, by the way, what's your model, your LLM doing? Uh, I think right now it's trying to tell me what is an SSD, but. Uh... We may not go to uh, get a good response from it. Uh, previously, I had it trying to write me a story on sloths, yeah. and it was on a token generation basis of like one token by every three and a half minutes. So I could have probably kicked it off, had it going, and then we might have had a story when we returned from this trip. So it's a little bit longer than a cup of coffee? Yes. So this may not be for everyone. It may not be the greatest use case, but we had it half, that, had half a day with one drive and a limited opportunity to sneak into Solidime and get something done. Yeah, but I mean, the, the key point, the, the key takeaway is we had a whimsical idea with the 61 terabyte. Yep. We're looking at like, okay, video games are big. This is an actual use case that a, a large capacity enterprise drive might go into. And we should give the plug for 122 in general, stating that the power of it's not even the power, it's the condensing your storage footprint in RackU. Just a standard 24 bay server is now three petabytes with these drives inside. That's, Can I get one? It, no, we get we got one, or we got well, two. I, Although I have, we're in here now and I see a bunch of boxes over there. I have three. I just need we're sl a few more. I don't know if we should put that on tape. That you're slowly picking up drives as you walk around the lab. <sighs> By the time this publishes, it'll be gone. That's a good point. We will be gone, and uh, we'll have much more information on the 122s, everything that we're doing. Links in the description below. Check that out. And until next time, thanks for checking us out.